know exactly what I'm doing and that's why I'm pay attention if you haven't paid attention to no other video pay attention to this you got a foreclosure coming up pay attention you're sitting your anus is in jail and you don't know how to get your butt out pay attention those of you who are sitting up there got all these traffic tickets pay attention this ain't about hating no government this is not about hating no government official Ladies and gentlemen, I could care less about a so-called government official. Do you understand? I could care less about a so-called police officer or a U.S. Marshal or a person that's in the military. I don't judge people because they are a part of a system or they are a part of a government. I could care less about government. Government doesn't benefit me. Look, the government hasn't done anything for me but made life difficult. Do I hate them because of that? I can care less. It's not my problem. What I want you to focus on and understand, pay attention to the screen. A citizen has the right to file a criminal complaint with the Justice of the Peace. This is in Texas. Have you Texans been filing your criminal complaints? Hold on, don't, don't rush right now and go out there and file complaints. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to properly file a complaint, understand, if the complaint is merely a defective complaint, appealees cannot be held liable for assisting in the arrest because McFarland merely exercised his right as a citizen to file a complaint. Okay? Pay attention! You have the right as a citizen to petition for redress. That's what a right to petition for redress is. You're filing a complaint. It's a constitutional right. Now, it's not just Texas. Hold on. I want y'all to pay attention. You also have the right to go to court and file a criminal complaint. I told you, in Arizona, that is the constitutional right. That's what I did. This is the Third Circuit. That's exactly what I did. I filed a complaint and gave it to the, <laughs> gave it to the judge. Handed it to him. Told you guys about when I walked out of that courtroom. Next thing I know, that fool was kicking. And they said he was kicking things and throwing things across the room. Everybody in the courtroom, the men came back telling me that they could hear it. And they asked me, what did I do? And all, I could not stop laughing. And I said, oh, he read it. Because you know how they take things from you and they don't read? Okay, well, he read it after I left. He got an understanding. He filed a criminal complaint on the record against himself. Because he was stupid enough to do that, he had to recuse himself from the case. He actually called me back to court and literally, with a, a, a sad puppy dog look on his face, okay, what is it you want me to do? I just want you to recuse yourself from this case. Fine, done. That was it. I've been trying to recuse him for over a year. Fine, done. So ladies and gentlemen, you have the right to file criminal complaints. There is no law requiring you to go to the attorney general to file your criminal complaint and leaving it up to them to determine whether or not a law has been broken. You have the right to file it. So if you've been trying to file police reports with the police department and they've been refusing you, file your complaint with the DA's office. And if the DA refuses you, File it with the court, and if the court refuses you, file it with the court's executive office, known as the Judicial Council. And if they refuse you, then you're going to file a complaint. Ladies and gentlemen, this document I hope will be up by tomorrow. This is the document. I will show it to you in a second. I just got to paste one more thing about the criminal complaints. I got to paste that in here. Because... What I'm doing, and this is the genius part, I'm not putting in a bunch of case laws. Man, that document was like uh, almost 30 pages long with all those case laws. No, I'm putting the actual web addresses where all of the case laws are listed. For things like judges are officers of an institution known as the court. Shows the judges are officers of the court. Officers of the court cannot violate citizens' constitutional rights. I, I, it says, deprivation of rights under color of law is a crime. Conspiracy against rights is a crime. Denial to access the court is a violation of constitutionally secured rights. 
a cognizable crime, and it explains what a crime is. A felony is a cognizable crime as a high crime. And then judges can be charged with violation of high crimes and misdemeanors. And then I pulled up the law, which requires one to bring forth a complaint before a magistrate or other official. That's called Miss Persian a felony. Now, police officers have a duty to the public. Tons of case law. And in the case, pay attention, Gonzalez versus Castle Rock, the Supreme Court said the police, without a showing of an actual contract, did not have a duty to the public. As long as the public pays taxes and the police receive their funding as a result of those taxes, yeah, they have a responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to save this. I don't know if it's going to let me. I got to rename it anyway. This is our criminal complaint. And we're going to take this complaint and we're going to take it and we're going to mix it with this. We're going to mix it with this one right here. Right here. Oh, can't do that. Sorry, y'all. Um, I gotta, I gotta put y'all on pause. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh, 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 okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's called judicial alleged criminal judicial felony under color and authority of law complaint. Okay, so this is a judicial felony under color of law and authority of law complaint. Just that simple. That ain't simple. That sounds complicated. Well, technically it is, because what we're doing, let me show you the beginning of the form. I haven't completed it. I just worked on it. It's been all day, and you've got pages where you can add stuff, and you can attach stuff to it. i got to finish this section right here, because you see it says strongly agree, disagree. It ain't supposed to say that. It's supposed to say this right here. Several occasions were there witnesses. Did someone suffer harm, physical injury and or harm? Did anyone complain and verbal and or written complaint are you willing to testify then it asks all these questions because this is the complaint people now let me show you something yeah it's small right now because i'm working on it this gives you the years of occurrences if it's before 2011 then you sit up here and you put it right there the dates then it's did somebody lose or was their failure to act and did it cost someone their life, property, liberty, reputation, or other? Okay, the officers of the court name, at the beginning, it gives you, you know what, I'm going to have to make this, yeah, because of this right here is too long, so let's see if I can bring it up. Let's see, let's see if it's going to let me. Yeah, I'm going to have to decrease the size of this because this is too big. And that's only because I need to add more officers. So we're going to make it 14. Fault oh, that's too short. MC too short. That's too short, y'all. No, we can do that. All right. This is page one. Now, what I want to do is I got to add more of these. Little bit more, 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 little bit more. Uh, we're gonna do this one right here. Okay, so we're just gonna do that one, and we're gonna give me a second so I can do it right. And you know what? I'm gonna put y'all on pause while I do this. Copy. Hold on now. We'll be right back. Uh-oh. It's Adobe Professional. It's restarting. All right. I got to go ahead and update the Adobe. So that will be in my background. It'll interfere with us a little once in a while, but we need to talk. First, we showed you about the criminal conduct. One of the other things that the person is attesting to is their understanding of this point. If Congress receives a complaint alleging criminal conduct of a judge, it must investigate. A congressional inquiry 
has been held to be instituted when a committee chairman commences an investigation into a matter within his committee's proper jurisdiction. Okay? Now, one of the other questions, and we got the whole page, took all the case law, so if they, they want to check, they can go check. We ain't got to put not a single case law in the document. They're supposed to know their own stupid laws, so let them do the searching. We gave them the link. Follow the link. Follow the link. This one is Congress receives it. No, that's the same thing. Uh, I did it twice because I copied and paste, copied and paste, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, hold on. Needed to see where the update was. This one is the right to petition for redress is a binding and secured right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is fundamental, a fundamental principle in the right to petition government for redress of grievance is among the most precious liberties safeguarded in the Bill of Rights because without the petition for redress, government doesn't exist. You can't have government without the right to petition for redress. Why? Because the right to petition for redress gives you your fire department. Without a right to complain, what's the fire department going to do? They need authority to go and put out fires. They need somebody to give them the authority. That's why they need a complaint, people. That's why you got the right to complain. The police can't do nothing to nobody without somebody lodging a complaint. They don't have any authority. That government gives them no authority. Why? Because the government is other people, by the people, for the people, and the people ain't said nothing about you can do whatever you want. Okay? They need a complaint. Follow, follow this. Plaintiff filed a compliance complaint. Without a complaint, government is powerless. I know, I know, I know you don't understand, and I, I can't help that. I can't help that people don't understand that one little clause in the First Amendment which gives government power. Now, let's continue. We're going backwards because these are the things that I've already put in the document. An oath to uphold the Constitution is a binding contract and or agreement. When they take an oath, they take it to the Constitution. Doesn't matter if they take 18,000 other oaths. Doesn't matter if they take an oath invalidating the first oath. If they take an oath invalidating the first oath, that means that they have forsook their office, which means they are not operating in a proper capacity and or jurisdiction. Without a doubt, the Constitution is the highest law of the state, and all public officials have sworn to uphold and defend that Constitution. We are sworn to uphold and obey, obey, obey the Constitution. And that's the same thing. Every state officer takes an oath to uphold the constitutional rule. What is that rule? That you people, you people of the United States of America gave them their authority. That they're there to serve you. If you violate the rights of another, you can be prosecuted and put through due process. Due process. Not their process, due process. Who the, is due? Go and talk to him and he'll explain who you is. I mean, who he is. Ladies and gentlemen, presumption of law is not the law. A legal presumption is not evidence. It's not law. It establishes a point where there is no testimony, no inference of fact from absence of testimony, and also when all testimony is is so balanced that the point is not decided by testimony. Presumptions are not law, people. They never were. However, the presumption, not being conclusive, is simply a rule of evidence, not one of law. Presumptions have never been law, ever. So when you go presumption of law, there is no such thing. It is a presumption of fact, not a presumption of law. Interesting, huh? It is a rule of law, not a presumption. Presumptions are not law. That's why they say it is a rule of law, not a presumption. All right. The presumption is not one of law. The pres it is a presumption of fact and may be rebutted. As long as it can be rebutted, it's not the law. You see, you can't rebut the law because the law is a fact. You can't rebut a fact. Sorry. Presumption is not the law. 
So they want to rely on presumption. Let them do what they're going to do. But no, you don't get to do that when you're dealing with me. Because I don't have to submit to your presumptions. That's why I told you guys, you go into these courts, and this document will say the same thing, that you are not submitting to the jurisdiction. Okay? It's going to be a non-appearance complaint. Just that simple. Now, a creditor must show proof that they own the debt. To prevail on a claim for debt collection, a creditor must demonstrate ownership of the debt, documentation detailing the amount of the principal and the amount owed, detailing and evidence that the alleged debtor is the person responsible for the debt. Ladies and gentlemen, this is everybody. Why are you guys going into court and not challenging? Well, I tried to challenge. And if you tried to challenge and they didn't listen to you, then you hammer them with their own laws. And that's why I'm putting together your complaint form. It will be up. My hope is tomorrow. I just got to get the Adobe and everything going so I can make it a PDF and we'll put it up on the site. As a matter of fact, there's a way to put a link in YouTube. But I don't know, I don't know, but I'll put a link underneath the video, okay? When I get a chance! Now, we got the creditor must show. Let's go to the next one, because we got quite a few. Police officers on duty to the public. Police officers owe a duty to the public. It is well settled that a police officer is on duty all the time. For all practical purposes, why? Because he has a special duty of protecting the public. Special duty of protecting the public. He has a duty, 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 duty. A police officer on off-duty status is obligated to preserve the public peace and protect the lives and property of the public in general. They are considered to be under duty to respond as police. The reason why we put this here because you have Miss Gonzalez. And I hope there's somebody in here who knows Miss Gonzalez out of Castle Rock, Colorado, who lost her three daughters. And the Supreme Court said that the police didn't know her a special duty because she didn't specify, the attorney, that there was an obligatory duty for the police. The fact that the police pay attention, receive funding from your taxes, you're not giving them that funding for anything else other than for them to carry out their mandate means they owe you an obligation. Okay? Now, even if there was no probable cause, in order for there to be a constitutional violation, it appears clearly that uh, to that reasonable police officer that no probable cause exists for the arrest. Police officers are not to be held to a standard of lawyers and judges in the quiet of the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen, we already have laws that make it clear that a police officer cannot determine probable cause. They never had the authority. The Constitution only gives that authority to a judge. Go back and reread the Fourth Amendment. Reread, please, Miranda versus Arizona. Now, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, we're going to do A-R-R-E-S-T-S-P-R-I-V-A-T-E-C-I-T-I-Z-E-N. Police officers make arrests as private citizens. They don't make arrests under their official capacity as a police officer. A police officer has never done that. Why? Because they can't. However, police officers outside the jurisdictional territory may make an arrest as a private citizen where a private citizen can lawfully make an arrest. That's all police do. They never made an arrest as a police officer. They cannot. Okay? Now, you see this thing says police officers outside? They keep saying outside. Why? Because the law doesn't give them the authority to make an arrest. You don't believe me? That's all you have to do is go do the research. Okay, now these keep saying police officers outside. Off, outside. Outside. Arrest made by a police officer acting only as a private citizen when they effect an arrest are valid under Louisiana statutory law. Pay attention. Thus, an arrest made by an officer acting only as private citizen when they effect an arrest 
they can only arrest you as a private citizen. They cannot arrest you, arrest you as a quote unquote state actor. Okay? But concluding that the officers were not acting as private citizens. Limiting his authority does not have less authority to arrest than a person who is a private citizen. See, there is no authority for a police officer to arrest anyone. They do it as a private citizen, always. But when they show up in court in uniform, nobody ever challenges that. So ask that mother, did he come in there and make the arrest as an officer? Did he do it under his official title and official authority? And once he says that, then you say, Your Honor, I move to strike all this man's testimony and have it stricken from the record and any evidence obtained by him and any evidence of the arrest and everything stricken from the record. You don't say, why? Well, because he can't make an official arrest under his official capacity. Every time he makes an arrest, because there is no code which allows him to make an arrest in his official capacity. Every time he makes an arrest, he does it as a private citizen. This does not mean that the peace officer acts as a private citizen when making arrests. No, yes, it does. Now, what, look, pay attention. Watch this case. This 2011 critical point is simply this. Although a police officer is always a peace officer, a, pol a peace officer is always a peace officer, his or her authority to act in that capacity is restricted to territorial jurisdictional limits of his or her employing agency. Pay attention. The limits of their employing agency is their private corporations. Private corporations can never receive any constitutional authority to make arrests unless otherwise protected by law. What's protected by law? You, the private citizen. Now, hold on. We ain't going to talk about this no more. Do your own research on this. This has been a long-standing fact. The, the people back in the day, when I was growing up, those older men that I used to sit and talk to, they knew this. This was commonplace. It's the people today that don't know it, because we got all this this camouflage case law out there and you can you can make up that term you can even call it that camouflage case law it is designed to hide the facts because they operate on presumption of law so if you don't rebut their presumption the case law stands rule 8.31 or 8 colon 30 dash 1 or 3 dash 1 or 58 anyway provides that the complaint shall be made upon oath before a magistrate and or other proper officer the law only requires that I bring forth my complaint to a magistrate. Ladies and gentlemen, technically by law, you don't have to go to the Attorney General's office. You can file your complaint with the court. Most courts have hearings on Tuesdays or Thursday mornings. They're called ex parte hearings. The statute requires a complaint in writing to be made to the magistrate. Go back. This is Utah. Every state has the same law. Here's Alaska. The complaint is generally sworn before a judge or a magistrate, and only then can a copy be served upon the defendant. It is not the attorney general who files the complaint. It's you, Washington. The magistrate is required to, in plain terms, inform the defendant of the nature of the complaint against him. You make the complaint. That's the right to petition for redress. They cannot move forward without that complaint. So you file your complaint on the record because it's a constitutional right. And go ahead and look at ex parte motions. Every uh, Justice of the Peace Court or Metropolitan, known as the, what's that stupid court? Municipal Courts. They have an ex parte judge. It's called the emergency judge. It's the emergency hearing judge. They do emergency ex parte hearings all the time. The same judge that does the TROs, which is nothing but a criminal complaint filing. Ladies and gentlemen, learn the law. Oh, he don't know what he's talking about, y'all. Don't listen to him. He, uh, he gonna, he gonna sing y'all wrong. When I tell people that I've done this, I give you the case. I've, I've talked about it tons of times. I just talked about it earlier about handing the judge his own criminal complaint on the record. Go and look in the state of Arizona. The state of Arizona, you have the right to file a criminal complaint. Every citizen has that right to file a criminal complaint. Every citizen in the state. 
The only reason why I had so much trouble in Arizona is because I was filing a criminal complaint initially under the law. Okay? To impeach an Article Three judge, see, a judge can be charged with high crimes. To impeach an Article Three judge, the judge must be brought up on real charges. What are real charges? High crimes and misdemeanors. Receive a real trial before a full Senate as clearly required by the Constitution. Now, must be brought up on real charges. You, did you know you can file a criminal complaint with the United States Senate against the judge? Shh! They just told you. You better pay attention. They just told you. Misdemeanors and high misdemeanors are classified as crimes and proceedings against persons charged with such offenses must be by way of indictment. Yes, by way of indictment. That means after the investigation. Okay? Superior Court try some defendants who are accused of misdemeanors as well as felonies. Now, may, remember, the idea is high crimes are criminal. They're felonies. Now, watch this. Just to prove it to you, because you didn't understand all of this while I'm asking the question. Not actually asking the question, but putting the point in there. Cognizable felony is a crime. An offense that constitutes a felony must be an offense against the state. Now, you'll see, the underlying crime must be a felony. The statute makes the crime a felony. A felony is a felony no matter where it is committed, even if it's committed by a judge. A felony is a high misdemeanor. Wait a minute. Are you sure about that? I don't know. I, sometimes I make them, uh-oh, a felony is categorized as a high crime. Whew! I guess I gotta be sure as soon as it pulls up, the legislator has assessed that kind of act as the highest type of crime below a felony as a class A misdemeanor. Pay attention. The highest type of crime, high crimes, the highest type of crime is a felony. I didn't say it. They say Congress never defined it. Yes, they did. As such, this crime qualifies as a Class A felony, the highest level crime under the federal sentencing statute. The highest level crime, high crime, is a misdemeanor. Judges can be taken off the bench for high crimes and misdemeanors. This is not being done for the lowly, I don't know what I'm doing, I never filed anything in court before. No, this is for those people who know what they're doing. The people who've been around for a while, who've been in court, who know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm pointing out these things. A cognizable felony is a crime. An offense that constitutes a felony must be an offense against the state. A felony is a type of criminal offense. The statutory offense makes a crime as makes the crime as defined as a felony. Okay. To meet the definition of offense must be a felony or and be either blah 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 blah. And which crime is a felony? Commits a felony. Okay? So judges are taken off the bench for committing high crimes and misdemeanors. But hold on. Did you know that denial of access to the court is a violation of law? Violation of the Constitution? Denial of adequate access to the court is a violation of the basic constitutional rights. You know what? They cannot violate your rights under color of law. This denial of access to the court violates a constitutional right. The right to access to court. Happens all the time, ladies and gentlemen. It's just nobody ever goes and charges the judge with violating those rights. Many people like myself have been falsely arrested where they did not have any evidence, as in this last matter, where they were retaliating. Conspiracy against rights is a crime. A criminal statute for conspiracy against rights. A criminal statute for conspiracy against rights. It is against the law to violate somebody's rights. Not under Title 42, because Title 42 is a civil statute. Conspiracy is an essential element for conspiracy to interfere with civil rights. But we're not talking about to interfere. We're talking about violation of rights while acting under color of law. Conspiracy to interfere with civil rights. See, they're doing that to interfere with civil rights. Nobody cares about to interfere with because that's the language of the, pay attention, the civil statute. We're doing criminal. 
That's why criminal statute for conspiracy against rights, not to interfere with, but against rights, where they do it deliberately to violate your rights. So you know what? I was going to go back in there, watch this. I got a copy, and I got to do this. And I got to put the other link. I can't put this link because I didn't check all of them. And all of these are talking about civil rights. That's not criminal. Okay, see, this one does, this does the same thing. No, this, it is, this is a criminal statute which prohibits conspiracy to violate civil rights. Okay? The statute provides a cause of action for conspiracy to interfere with civil rights. We're not talking about interference. We're talking about criminal. This section contained in Chapter 13 of the Federal Criminal Code for violation of civil rights referred to conspiracy against rights and deprivation of rights under color of law. The statute defines a crime of conspiracy to interfere with civil rights. Now they both, this keeps listing 1985, but I don't care about 1985 because I'm dealing with Title 18. So because they keep talking about civil, that ain't helping me. I want these right here. See these? Okay, that's what I want. So we're going to go here. Sorry, they don't want you to know that when somebody violates a secured right, your rights under the Bill of Rights, that individual can be prosecuted when they are acting under color of law. That includes police officers. But if you notice, they always pay attention. Always, always, always. That's why Title 18, Section 241 and 242. I'll show it to you in a minute. We're going to copy this one because these all deal with criminals. Oh, they just a bunch of criminals. Copy. Now, show y'all. To violate a person's rights, uh-uh. They don't get to do that because they sneezed this morning. Oh, I saw that boy sneeze the other day, and his sneeze was so heavy. See, 242, 241, right up there. But now I got to go down to, let's see if it gives me my search bar. Nah, it don't give me the search. See, I did control F. Yeah, let's do A. Nah, it won't let me do control search. So I got to scroll down. And this is small, and I can't make it bigger like you think. There ain't no mechanism. There ain't no mechanism. Conspiracy against rights is right here. Why right here? See this right here? Right here. Conspiracy against rights. And so what I do is I start with the HTTPS, and I go replace. Now they have the right thing. You got the right one. Bye-bye. All right? Now, let's go back because we got some work to do. See, that's why I'm doing this video because I knew that was going to take long. This is how it normally takes. A long time, y'all. A long time. So, we got conspiracy against rights is a crime. When a judge violates your rights, when a judge deliberately violates your rights under color of law, then it is a crime. Federal criminal statutes do not provide a cause of action against the United States. So that you don't bring a cause of action against the United States, you bring it against the actors. Okay? Now, all we're doing is highlighting, I don't care what they did. You bring it, don't bring it against the institution, bring it against the actors. Because this makes it, pay attention, a violation of law for any one acting under color of law. A corporation cannot act on its own. So you can't bring a criminal complaint against a corporation. Okay? There's generally no private right of action under criminal statutes unless specifically authorized. No, actually, it is specifically authorized under the First Amendment. I already know about the Supreme Court cases which says you can't bring a criminal complaint, blah, 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 blah. There is no such thing. Go back and look at the First Amendment. Okay, trust me, I spent years researching that exact point. But here we go, here we go, here we go. The plaintiff has, in addition, invoked two criminal statutes in his complaint. These statutes impose criminal sanctions for conspiracy against rights of citizens and for the deprivation of rights under color of law. Section 241 and 242 do not, however, give rise to a civil action for damages or authorize individuals to institute criminal proceedings. Actually, it does authorize individuals to institute criminal proceedings. Why? Because they can file a criminal 
complaint. They may not be able to institute a proceeding, but they can file a complaint, a criminal complaint alleging those violations. Pay attention. To clarify, the court constitutes plaintiff's constitutional claim to arise under the civil rights statute, a <laughs> civil statute, because the plaintiff cannot on his own behalf institute criminal proceedings, not trying to institute criminal proceedings. We have the right to file a criminal complaint. We are not instituting criminal proceedings. There is no attempt to institute a criminal proceeding. You notice how they use that word, institute, because the court is an institution, criminal proceedings, because the court does proceedings. They're the ones who schedule everything. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to file our criminal complaint. Okay? Now, do not, however, give rise to a civil action for damages or authorize an individual authorized. We need permission to file a complaint. Authorize an individual to institute criminal proceedings. Nobody, and that's the word right there. Pay attention. Institute criminal proceedings. That's the catchphrase. That's why they all say it. Institute criminal proceedings. That's the legal terminology. Okay, that's what you're going to see. If I put it in there, you're going to keep saying institute criminal proceedings. So we're not trying to institute no proceedings. Oh, God, no. We're just following a complaint. And we want you to follow procedures when you receive a criminal complaint. Want to see a valid investigation. Come on now. Can, I, can anybody want to holler if you hear me? That's why we put the other case laws in here. That's why I put the other points. That it's a criminal act. By the way, do you know if they are aware that a crime has been committed, what they must do? Criminal statutes for conspiracy against rights. See? Criminal statutes. There are criminal statutes for conspiracies against rights. Now, as we go, we got one more. Conspiracy against rights is a crime. Criminal statutes, conspiracy against rights. Ladies and gentlemen, if conspiracy against rights is a crime and people get arrested for committing crimes all the time, then they can't ignore it because equal protection under the law says that if they had a right to file a criminal complaint against somebody else because somebody else's rights were violated, then you have the very same right to expect them to file a criminal complaint when your rights are violated. Deprivation of rights under color of law is a crime. The law also says that deprivation of rights under color of law is a felony. They cannot ignore felony. When a judge violates your rights under color of law, it's a felony. High crimes, misdemeanor. You just have to go over these laws so that you know what to say when they come back to you with all this bull crap. When they talk about instituting the criminal proceeding, ain't nobody trying to institute no proceeding. Officers of the court cannot violate a citizen's rights courts should not be parties to invasion of the constitutional rights of citizens after all officers are not allowed to violate the constitutional rights of citizens this type of proceeding does not violate the constitutional rights of a person such constitutional rights cannot be denied Constitutional rights invoked by citizens as the people may not be infringed upon by the government. Y'all need to be going over these cases. Constitutional rights invoked by citizens as the people. This is collective people, not just one person. This is collective. Okay? Those are the sovereign when the people are collective. Constitutional guaranteed rights may not be infringed upon. Just that simple. It is against the law to do so. The police can't do it. The court can't do it. The nobody can. You can't do it. You cannot violate another person's rights. You don't have that right. You cannot drive down the street in a vehicle, get into an accident, and not have the money to pay for the damage done. You must have some way of paying for damage if you cause injury. Even in the Hebrew law, that was the case. You know, a judge pro tem is an officer of the court. That's right. So judges are officers of the court. A judge is a judge and courts are established to do justice. Because they're officers of the court. The judges are officers of the state judicial system. Because in this case, what was going on just like in another case the judicial system on the state level they get paid pay attention by the state treasurer the judges 
Well, technically, they're not supposed to be getting paid by the state treasurer. They're supposed to be getting paid by the judicial branch. Judges are part of the judicial branch. Judicial branch of what? Sorry. Circuit court judges are constitutional officers. Mississippi. Clearly, they are officers of the court. Clearly? Well, how is that clearly? This decision clearly recognizes judges of municipal courts are judicial officers. So they're officers of the court. Because they're officers of the court, so are the attorneys, so are the police officers, so are the clerks of the court. Our complaint is against other officers of the court. That's the whole point. Now, the reason why, pay attention, we took 40 minutes. The reason why I'm bringing you to, through all of this so I can explain the logic behind the complaint. No, that was what we did yesterday. We got one more because you all need to understand this. We got one mo, one mo, one mo. It, it's going forward in a second. Okay, we're going to lose everything we've already looked at, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, M-I-S-P-I-R-I-S-O-N. Miss Persian. See, Persian. Uh, F-E-L-O-N-Y. Miss Persian of felony. It's actually a high misdemeanor, but it's still a felony. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Okay, we have to go here. And it's not going to let me because it's going to tell me that I don't have enough. Okay, so watch this. Fo, Yuma, Ebma, Sima. Uh-oh, I didn't get Fo. That's because my number lock is off. Fo, Yuma, Ebma, Sima. Come on now. You know what? I put the I right here. That's where the problem is. It's not Persian. It's Shun. Miss. Uh oh, that I is a little too big. Get off of there, cap locks. Okay. Well, I don't know. I I I don't forgot how to spell Miss Persian a felony. Let's see. Oh, I know how to f spell Miss Persian a felony. Y'all want to see my way of spelling Miss Persian a felony? Watch this. I'm going to let Google tell me because I really am tired. It's 530. I've been working on this stuff all day. See? Oh, it's okay. Not I-R. It's R-I. Whoever having knowledge of the actual commission of a felony cognizable by a court of the United States conceals or does not as soon as possible make known the same to some judge or other person in civil or military authority under the United States shall be fined under this title or in prison no more than three years. Miss Persian of felony. That's what I'm doing. So watch this. No, I don't want that one. I want this one. Come on. Come on. I'm going to copy because I'm too tired. I, I really, really am too tired. Like I said, I've been doing a whole lot. I almost forgot which one was paste. I'm not joking. I wish I could joke about this, but this is how I get when I'm exhausted. So I've explained that to people. And so the last couple of days, I've been really concerned about this. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we went from a complaint looking like this with like i said a bunch of pages take a look well as soon as it lets me because it's yeah take a look a bunch of pages okay which uh, uh it just didn't i didn't want to put this all this in there because nobody they wouldn't pay attention to this it's too many words for them you know how they get blah, blah, words honey yeah look at all the words no we can't read that just put that in file 13. The concept of misperson of felony is codified at 18, section 4. Title 18, the criminal code, section 4. Title 18, the criminal code, section 4. Section 4 of the criminal code punishes, punishes misperson of felony. Whoever fails to notify, it says military authority, 
and regular authority, civil and criminal, it tells you that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to show you at the beginning of this document. Or is it in the middle? I think it's in the middle. Hold on. And then we're going to take this video and bring it to a close. Hold on. I'm going to show you the section. You know what? It's Is it here? I don't think I put it there. Huh. I don't remember what section. It's, it's here, though. Trust me, it's here. What it actually says, and it has boxes documenting that you're bringing it to their attention because of the... Oh, right here. There it is right there. Sorry, I thought it was at the beginning. Do you want your complaint forwarded to the United States Senate Judiciary Committee, the Attorney General Criminal Division, the Department of Defense JAG Unit, the SEC Securities Fraud Division, the District Attorney's Office Criminal Division, the Federal Bureau of Investigation Criminal Division, to the Administrative Office of both local and federal court, to the Federal Trade Commission Fraud Department and other. That's what we did. Now hold on, there, there's a thing I need to do. That other, it ain't big enough. We are gonna give y'all some room to write, you know? As a matter of fact, we are gonna do more than give y'all some room to write. Where are we at? Oh, it ain't gonna let me do it. Okay, cause this ain't one of those. Uh, let's see, no? Yeah, it ain't gonna let me add other. Let's see if I can get in the other box. Nope, it ain't gonna let me add other. So y'all just gonna have to be stuck with other because I'm not gonna change it. But y'all get to add, just add. Do you know that it is a felony to make a false report and or false claim? Do not put no because it is a felony. You're hearing me say it and this document is being put up by me. It is a felony to make a false report. Don't be sitting up here playing no stupid games. You better be serious. You better be able to document what they done did wrong. Oh, uh, ignore. Sorry. I, I want this to stay up because I don't want to lose this doc. You know, because this is a lot of work. So that that's why. Because, see, there is no save button. See what it says? Save in PDF form? Well, I can't save it in PDF form until Adobe is up. But there is no other save button. It says saved automatically, but I can't trust that because I've never used this before. I've had it for years. Never used it before. So, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this is being done for you. All the information contained in this video, you can find for yourself, which makes it factual information. We did not harm any animals in the production of this video and there were no crimes committed that's my disclaimer and and I, I, I vouch for my disclaimer all right oh by the way let I'm sorry one last thing we got one last thing right here is your validation and verification I affirm ascribe attest and declare that the aforementioned which is based on first hand knowledge and or information is wholly accurate and witnessed by and before God on this day of presentment and I do so exercising my right to practice my religion of my choice under divine retribution if otherwise I bring forth this my complaint as stated so help me God now for those of you who claim you don't believe in God stop lying but if you don't believe in them don't check the box okay I'm not trying to force you to believe but you're going into a court system that says right there on their wall in God we trust I know in the God we trust and that does I don't care about that you have dollar bills that you use that says, in God we trust. The Constitution and the Declaration of Independence were all founded on somebody's belief in some God. So, pay attention so that you understand. Your God can be whatever you want it or him to be. Or her, or it, or whatever. Don't care. The law says that you have the right to believe 
i.e. practice religion of your choice. If your God is evolution, then you believe in your God evolution. If your God is the universe, then you believe in your God the universe. Go back and look at Avatar if you need to catch up on things. So nobody's trying to force anybody to believe in anything. But however, penalty of perjury? No, those who believe in a God have the right to practice their religion. So they believe that if they lie, they're going to receive some retribution for violating his law. That's why it's written the way it's written. Not written for you idiots who think that every time somebody mentions the word God there, it's an affront to you because you are somebody. That's, I called you an idiot. That's right, and you can hold on to it because that's what idiots do. They take things personally because they ain't got nothing better to do with their lives. Hey, look at that. Look at the time. Gotta go. Take care of yourselves. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. I'm out of here.